Good evening, everybody, and hello. Welcome to Chase Race number six. The second half of the chase is here. We are getting ready to be set to go. And I'm telling you what, for both series, a lot is on the line. People know this is a good chance to where you could redeem yourself or fail really, 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 really bad. Who knows what could happen coming on by? We'll be disclaiming the points in just a minute. But first, your starting lineup for this race on the pole is going to be Patrick Smith next to him. Scott Roush, third, Nathan Fisher, fourth, Nathan Orman. So, Nathan Fisher being the highest ranking chaser in the starting lineup. Fifth, Angel Navarro, sixth, Brett Pritchard, seventh, Cole Deaver, eighth, Ramey Fisher, ninth, Elijah Laird, completing the top ten, Jeffrey Fingai. Here's the rest of your starting lineup from 11th on back. Keep in mind, Nathan Fisher, he really needs a good run tonight especially with a few other people also needing really good runs in order to try to catch up to Benjamin Miles and others. And once again, another poor qualifying for that points leader of Benjamin Miles. Only one point separated between him and second place in points. As on the final row is TJ Hanley and Seth Cole. He'll be starting in that magical, and I mean magical, 42nd place position. So we'll go to the Nun camera. 51 laps of action that you are seeing here. Points coming in, as mentioned, Benjamin Miles has a one-point lead over Joshua Sicoli. Sicoli's management been closing the gap really, really slightly, and he is just getting really, really close. Give me just one second so I can close out something here real quick. There we go, making sure that the frames aren't going to be just as horrible there. Then the Bishop family duo of RJ and Ron are tied for third, being six points back. And then Zach Flickinger, you see, is in fifth. And then others kind of here and there down the road. Jake Baskinger is like the last car that could be able to be doing something decent. And then drivers who really need good runs. Cole Deaver, he's having a disastrous chase. Same for Kyle Matthews. Seth Cole had a good rebound. But those two we mentioned before, they need really good runs. Here comes the command to fire the engines. Drivers, stop your engines. As there's the command, Cole Deaver, Kyle Matthews. Deaver just having a disastrous chase. He's only accumulated a total of 10 chase points altogether. Compared to Benjamin Miles and others, Miles is at 5,057. Cole Deaver is at 5,015. In total, 42 back. He is struggling. Oh, someone's not going, I think. And it's Ace Rogers, the chaser. Trouble for the 91 Mountain Dew Chevrolet. That's a driver who was doing pretty decent in the points. And he will not start the race. So they're going to hopefully get that work done. He was actually the driver fifth in the points right there. He was seven back from Benjamin Miles. Pace car down pit road. 51 laps of action. It's showtime, folks. We are green at Texas. The second half of the chase begins. Patrick Smith leads lap number one. I failed to mention, too, at Michigan, I believe. Jeffrey Fingai was the hometown hero at that track, so my apologies if I did not mention it at that point. But anyway, speaking of hometown heroes and Texas, you're probably wondering who are the lucky contestants that are here. I believe we actually do have uh, one in from the Texas area. Yes, we do. That would be TJ Hanley in the 07. You see starting in the rear of the field there. He's definitely going to have to work his way up for sure. And that is it. When we come here tomorrow, there's a few that will be there. But this is the only hometown hero that is represented there. Known as Team Hanley there. So... Gonna have to see what really will be in case there for Hanley. Got a lot of work to do. Speaking of work to do, Angel Navarro now trying to take the lead for Patrick Smith. Navarro's had a, such a disastrous season in his farewell tour. Trying to at least come up with one more win under that resume. You see all the stats that he's had all together accumulated in the inner cell. 
Navarro trying to complete the pass on the 15 as Smith is Smith is fighting on that highlight right there as Elijah Leonard nearly turned him, but they keep it together. Now Patrick Smith doing a crossover move on the 23, trying to at least lead a lap coming to the line. Give credit to Nathan Fisher and Cole Deaver. They have been chilling in the front of the field ever since. Navarro going to lead that lap. You'll see three wide right there. That's Cody Lamas in the five there. In between a... In, right, actually, not in between, but around him. Repair of William Brock Motorsports cars. William Brock and uh, Emmanuel Hartnett, which Hartnett will not be returning to the Intercell overall next season. He'll be a free agent. Unknown if he'll be back, not next season, but afterwards. Who knows what will happen. Benny Watson, the 74 there. He is right there. Keep in mind that 74 going to be rebranded for him to the 48. And hopefully something good will happen because I'll tell you what, the, the drivers there in the bottom two of the points are actually Benny Watson and who was leading, Angel Navarro, who lost the lead to Patrick Smith. Nathan Fisher jumps up to second, freezing the third. Now James Qualls up into the fourth position. Cody Lamas in the middle right there. Trying to get out of that traffic. And look who's starting to sli slip up there to the front of the field. Jake Baskiger. And don't look now, kids, because look who's coming. That's the points leader, Benjamin Miles. You see he's a easily ahead of the 33 there of Joshua Sicoli. Where is Sicoli? Ooh, Zach Flickinger nearly got into Scott Roush right there. That was the outside pole sitter for this event. Sicoli on the high line. He's actually 41st right now. And he is the worst running chaser right now. That'll change, though. But top three broken away. Now Navarro under fire for fourth. That's Emmanuel Hartnett trying to take the position. And Hartnett will get the spot. Now Benny Watson getting moved to the middle. Now moved to the high line. Navarro at least should be able to hold on to that position. He should be at least. And now William Brock and Jake Baskiger, they're working together. Brock being very smart, going to have Baskiger follow right behind him as if he's uh, showing the way to part of C there. And Baskiger kind of had to check up right there, and it held up Nathan Fisher a bit. And now James Qualls trying to look for the lead. Here comes the 70. He's had a mediocre season so far. He's had some good runs, had some bad runs. But a win would definitely be nice for that 70 team. Keep in mind, this is his final season of Xfinity. He'll be going to the Cup next season for Johanna Atwood Motorsports. All these drivers you see in the top four looking for their first win of the season. And I believe, if my memory serves me correctly, all with the exception of Emmanuel Hartnett and I think William Brock, but mainly Emmanuel Hartnett. Yep, that is indeed the case. They're looking for their first career win. How about Baskiger's jumped up to fifth? Don't count him out at all. Kind of seen in the background there as F.P. Jones is battling Nathan Fisher. Cole Deaver now back in the inside line. Ron Bishop snuck his way up here, and Benjamin Miles doing the same as well. Give credit to the 19. The one time they're having a good run, that 42 has shown up. For Deaver to do anything, I mean, he needs not only the 42 to be involved in a wreck, but he needs to win a race there because that's the only way I can see the 9 car even doing something at this point. Right now, the set of chasers he's going to try to get around are F.B. Jones III and Nathan Fisher. Miles all over the back bumper of that 9 car, and you see Jones getting kicked up to the high line right there. Now, the battle for the Xfinity points is more closer than the Cup because of, you know, once Miles had a couple of bad runs, especially in a row, that allowed Joshua Sicoli and others to capitalize as Qualls continues to lead. Now Navarro back on the attack for second. Nope, now Jake Baskiger going to make a move for second place. Look at all the different teams you got right here. All ballad for these positions. William Brock Motorsports, Fingai, or, uh, Roush Fingai Racing, Archangel Racing, Meyer Toyota Racing, Flickinger Racing, and Horizon Motorsports, all within this area alone. And then up in the lead, Johan Atwood Motorsports. Look at Watson going three wide for third. He's got nothing to lose. If he wins a race, I will be absolutely flabbergasted. Because this is so far looking really good for that 74 team. You can tell they're ready for next season. But at least a win would be definitely a boost for sure. Because it's been a, a nightmare 
run for that 74 team. They went with a, a mediocre run with Jonathan Wong to just a disaster run with Benny Watson. Remembers mentioned he'll be in the 48 next season. So the last time the 48 was used, that was Benjamin Miles, ironic enough. He had an okay season in that car as well. Jake Baskiger all over the bumper of James Qualls trying to make a move. And it's going to tuck back in line as that Red Bull Chevrolet. Give a lot of credit to Baskiger. Picked a not bad time trying to capitalize despite the fact that Miles is uh, having a pretty good run there in that 42. So while that's going on, we're tucking back. There's Miles already on the tack. He's trying to go after Nathan Fisher for a chase point right there. Cole Deaver, FB Jones the third, right behind him in cars number nine and 18. Now RJ Bishop starting to catch on up into the pack right there. Ron Bishop trying to do the same right there. This is actually the first time I've ever seen a, a father-son duo actually get not only into the top five in points, but also really are tied. That's amazing. I've never seen that before in Intercell history. Cody Lamas, man, he slipped back quite a ways. Last scored before crossing the line 21st. What is he at this time? As Patrick Smith has done the same thing as well. 15th. Now Smith getting passed by his teammate, Connor Meyer. And a battle for the lead. James Qualls, Jake Baskiger. Baskiger wants the lead. This is going to allow Benny Watson and William Brock to catch up. Remember for Baskiger, he's got a teammate there. That's 26. Now it's like a literally a four-car Chevy battle. Baskiger barely led at the line. And new leader, Jake Baskiger. And look at this. Fifth place of Chevy. Sixth place of Chevy. Toyota in the seventh. The best forward you could find is was in the top ten. That's Jeffrey Finguy. And Dodge, that'd be R.J. Bishop in the 98. Remember the next forward, you got to go all the way back to Scott Roush in that 60 right there. There's Seth Cole now starting to work his way up to that front of the pack. He knows he's got to get some points. Same said for Kyle Matthews and definitely also can be said for Courtney Keith. She had a bad run at Michigan, got involved in that crash. And then I think the week before, too, at D.C., she also had some issues there, too. So she's looking for a rebound right now. Not having it, but we are in lap 21 to 51. Some good, clean green flag racing. A lot of passing as Qualls continuing to slip back. Now battle for a lead again. Benny Watson and Jake Baskiger. Baskiger trying to hang on there. Benny Watson trying to make a move. Here comes Miles now coming to the point. Look out for that 42. He's got a full head of steam. Oh, but he didn't get enough of a run right there. He slipped off the corner. Baskinger going to hold on for now. But for how long as Baskinger shuts the door on Watson, will hold on to the lead. And Miles had to check up right there on that inside line. He's going to hold up Benny, or uh, not Benny Watson, I'm sorry, F.P. Jones the third, rather. We're still green, keep in mind. And Zach Flickinger having a disastrous run. There's previous race winner Adam Flickinger in the 44. So we have seen three different Flickingers win in the in the Intercell Cannon. So that's unbelievable to know, especially in the Xfinity Series. Def Benjamin Miles definitely redeeming for sure. Qualls now back on the inside line, trying to go after William Brock for position. Cole Deaver now trying to go after him as well. Man, that 42, that hurt Chevrolet. You cannot escape that side of that, that car. It has been... Unbelievable this season. Remember Benjamin Miles and Alex Drayton. They are the only three-time winners in the respectable series. Miles, the three-time winner in Xfinity. Alex Drayton, the recent three-time winner after winning at Michigan in the Cup Series. And now Miles hunting down Benny Watson. Look at the three big Chevrolet teams right there. You got Flickinger Racing, the 74. Seg Keith Motorsports in the 42. And William Brock Motorsports in two, which will be renamed and rethemed to Full Frontal Racing next season. They're going to have Ryan Griffin in the 29, who will be a rookie that season.
And looking through here, of course, Jake Baskinger is going to return and aforementioned Joshua Sicoli. So one rookie, two veterans. We'll see what will happen. Right now, top three are chasers. Next chaser make it fo top four being chasers. Cole Deaver finally showing the speed. And at least for now, not being wrecked out. But the bad news for that nine team, though, that guy is up here. Not helping the case. Still caution free. I'm actually amazed. Despite some three wide racing we've been seeing a little bit throughout this pack. Joshua Sicoli, man, he's been stuck in the rear of the field. Same for Zach Flickinger. Wow, run. Bishop falling all the way back. Same for Cody Lamas in the five. And a question among many. We may encounter green flag pit stops really, really soon. The question is when. That's always a key question component. When we come to a track like this, fuel strategy is definitely key coming here. I'm going to say around lap 35, we may see green flag pit stops if we go caution free. Keep in mind between Baskinger and Benjamin Miles looking at the comparison as FP Jones is now going to try to battle for second here. Baskiger is a total of 22 points behind Benjamin Miles. And now Jones trying to take a position. That'd be a chase point right there. FB Jones to the third. She is a total of 11 back. So that will help a little bit. Cole Deaver, definitely one of the worst eyes right there. Dead last out of all the chasers. It has just been nightmare fueled for that nine team. He is literally a total of 42 back. That is how bad of a chase run he is. Hartnett, Carter Friesen, and now Benny Watson now is trying to find a way to knock the 42 to the high line of battle. But I'm seeing pit stops are happening. And the leaders are going to surrender the spot. Cole Deaver going to lead after the leaders coming down pit road. Baskiger, Jones, Benny Watson, William Brock, James Qualls, Angel Navarro, and Jackie Tang. They're the only drivers coming down. I'm surprised by that. Now Manuel Hartnett is going to take the lead. Let's see from Pack from uh, Pack Two is going to come on down. Manuel Hartnett is going to come on down, surrender the lead. Nathan Fisher is going to come on down. Miles and Deaver stay out. R.J. Bishop coming down. There's Meyer and Finn guy. Whole bunch of cars coming on down on this little pack. That's Hartnett, Fisher, Bishop. Finn Guy, Roush, and Courtney Keith. Oh, and Ron Bishop's got damage and the caution's out. Oh, big implications for Ron Bishop, who was tied for third in the points. And I think it may have involved, I'm not too certain. Oh, and damage on Patrick Smith, and he's got front and rear, and I have a feeling that's what the caution may have been out for. Skid marks a three, and oh, Jake Baskinger! I'm not sure if he has damage, but he is slow. Now the leader's coming on down, and Jessica Schellen with damage. In car number 20 is now the leaders. The rest of them are coming down pit road, and the debris there on the pit road there, TJ Hanley coming out, and oh, wait a minute. Is there, there is damage. A little bit, I think. Oh, well, maybe not. I thought there was damage on Zach Flickinger, but I guess not. And leading them down is going to be Carter Friesen. These guys, however, they are a lap down. And Ron Bishop out of the race. And the 54 DJ Curtis out of the race. So a tough break for FP Jones the third, Jake Baskinger for the Chasers, as well as Jackie Tang. That is not what they needed at all. They'll be in the tail end of the lead lap, but... That is not what they needed at all to see a caution. Caution's out for the first time today here in Texas. Let's take a look what happened to Patrick Smith and others. Well, it's going to start with Jessica Shelton in the 20 and the 97 and Nathan Stapleton. You see the 20 just get a power run right there. Goes into the 12 of Fisher. And then Stapleton really just comes in hot. And all three of those drivers, they take a hard lick. Mainly Shelton and Stapleton. But look at the 20 of Jessica Shelton. Get on two wheels and then... Barrel roll down the back straight. DJ Curtis 
Nowhere to go for him. Wow, hit the B pillar that looked like right there. Oh, man, right on top of Patrick Smith. There's Ron Bishop getting involved, and somehow Joshua Sokoli is going to get by that accident. Don't know how, but he did. And Ron Bishop took a really bad impact. That knocked him out of the race. So that is a big blow for tied for third of the points right there. And that is what brought out the yellow. However, I mean, I'm just like blown away here. Courtney Keith, she's making an indication of coming down pit road. Caution was already out too. That was the worst part. They already made a commitment. Holy cow, that was a lick for Jessica Shelton in the 20. Caution's out. Freezing's your leader. Take it back to the green. Pace car's giving us a one lap to go out of the race as Ace Rogers has called it quits. So he's going to get one chase point. DJ Kersow, Jessica Shell, Nathan Stapleton, Art, and uh, not RJ. I'm sorry. I keep used to saying RJ, but it's not. It's Ron Bishop. It's Ron Bishop. He has two chase points. He'll be out of the race in 38th. And the three that were aforementioned, Jake Baskinger, F.E. Jones III, and Jackie Tank, they are in the tail in the lead lap. They are hoping and praying for a very extremely quick caution. Otherwise... They are in some bad, bad juju stuff. So there you see, there are the three. Leader is Carter Friesen. Second, the highest ranked chaser, Benjamin Miles. Third, TJ Hanley. Fourth, Emmanuel Harden. Fifth, Nathan Fisher. Sixth, RJ Bishop. Seventh, Connor Meyer. Eighth, Jesse Turner. Ninth, Seth Cole. Clean the top 10, Joshua Osborne. Find the rest of our chasers in the top 20. You got Courtney Keith in 13th. And that is it. Kyle Matthews in 21st, keep in mind. Lamas, 28th. Flickinger, 30th. Sicoli 32nd. And Deaver 34th. And Green Flag back underway. And then aforementioned Baskinger 35th. FP Jones the third 36th. Green Flag back underway. Carter Friesen. In the DC Solar Chevrolet. Trying to capture a win is the fellow Canadian. Keep in mind, Friesen is looking for his first career victory. And it'll be another different Canadian driver winning as now Tang and Baskiger trying to hang on, but they're going to be put a lap down, mainly Baskiger. That is not good news for the two team. Jones trying to run away. Here comes Hanley, the hometown hero, trying to take the lead. We've seen before drivers win at their home tracks. Trent Dunham winning at Texas. That's happened a couple times. Mason Powers as well, I rock enough at this track. He did it in the Xfinity Series in the 25 and almost did it in Cup in the 41. Actually, I think he did. I'm not too sure. Now Seth Cole. Look at that 55. Someone sparked that 55 car. He is now the highest running chaser in third. Meyer to second. Nathan Fisher and RJ Bishop, they've both gotten around the 42. He is stuck on the high line. That is good news if you're a chaser that is not on the tail end of the lead lap. Gordy Keefe just showed it right there. That's what you got to do. And now Miles trying to be back on the attack. That's exactly what you want to do if you're Miles. Kyle Matthews seen that opportunity, and he's going to get kicked up to the high line just like that. Lamas, who was up in the front at one point, now struggling to try to get up some ground. Meyer with the lead, took away from Hanley. Seth Cole in the second, Harden at third. Here comes Seth Cole going for the lead once more. Remember, a bunch of drivers here. They won't be coming back next season. But they will make, some will make their statement as a team owner like Meyer, Kyle Keith, Angel Navarro, RJ Bishop. All them, they're just looking to prove themselves there. Miles right now, 11th. I'm telling you, I say this. Where in the world did that 24 car come from? She has just shown up from nowhere and has now made a statement in the front of the field. But the big difference maker has been Seth Cole out in front trying to put F.E. Jones third lap down. There he goes down low in the 18 Z-Line. Toyota 
and will put her a lap down. Hartnett trying to follow. That's a big blow to those drivers right there. They did not need that at all. Hartnett, Meyer, all trying to work together. Friesen, right now in fourth. Give credit to RJ Bishop, hanging around in fifth very, very well. Nathan Fisher and Courtney Keith. They're possibly going to battle for a chase point. That's what it looks like. Not the case for now. Next chaser behind Benjamin Miles. Got to go all the way back to... Oh, man, Kyle Matthews. And for a second, I thought Brett Pritchard was slowing down to make an indication of coming down pit road. That would have been a huge debt into everything. You see Lamas and Zach Flickinger finally showing the speed, but a little too late for that 96 car. And Sicoli continuing to struggle. Deaver, the same for him as well. Smith is off of turn two right now. Leaders off turn four. They may approach him if we stay green. Seth Cole continuing to lead. Now Bishop putting work on Jones the third. And wow, look at Fingai with the full at a seam. Miles again kicked up to the high line. Here comes Hanley. Here comes Sanford. And now Benny Watson trying to work his way up. Got to remember that battle for the championship lead could really heat up. Hell, it may not even be for Miles that Zach Flickinger, or I'm sorry, not Zach Flickinger, Joshua Sicoli could be the main worry about here. Remember, there's other drivers that could sneak on in. Zach Flickinger not really having a good run. FP Jones the third having a great run. Ace Rogers struggled. Don't forget about RJ Bishop, who's a total of six points back. And Bishop definitely ahead of the 42. It'll be three to go at the line, this time by. Seth with a nice lead. Quick battle between Meyer and Hartnett. They got to settle it out quick. Look at Bishop in that 98. He knows a win would mean everything. Three wide for second. Here comes the ISM Speedway Dodge. Hell, maybe a battle between chasers. See Patrick Smith on the back straight in two. These guys are in one. I don't know if they're going to catch him. It'll probably be really close. Bishop's got no other cars behind him. It is Seth versus RJ for the win. Courtney Keith now trying to make it in the tracks. Give credit to Fisher. Finally, we'll get a good run. But the bad news is, Miles is in a high line, but it's not getting passed by chasers. It's a bunch of non-chasers that have passed him. However, Kyle Matthews may do something in that 62 there. Smith down pit row. No issues. Here comes RJ, battle for the lead with two to go. Here comes Fig Guy with a full out of steam. He is the one to represent Ford. Trying to deny the chasers though. Bishop, he's that's the one who is going to help. New leader, RJ Bishop, coming off the final turn. White flag in hand for RJ Bishop in the 98. He's had a great Xfinity season, but hasn't won a race since the opener, Daytona. Trying to be a two-time winner and really put some harm in Benjamin Miles. Fingai, it's going to be a little too late. Great battle behind, but it's not going to be enough. Checker flag in hand and RJ Bishop on a last lap pass. He's going to win at Texas. And a big 16 chase points for RJ Bishop and the 98 and that Dodge team. What a big, big momentum swing. Now comes the true question. Did he pass Benjamin Miles to have our first points lead change since the first chase race? So that's automatic. 14 plus 2. Remember, there were a total of 6 to tie, 7 to lead. 1, 2. Actually, let's look real quick from here. So as you see... You pass Seth Cole, that's one. Courtney Keith, two. Nathan Fisher, three. Looking through. Kyle Matthews, four. And then that right there, plus two. We looks like we may have a tie for the points lead between RJ Bishop. 
and Benjamin Miles. Unbelievable. Here are your top 10 results here. Presented by NASCAR and NBC Sports. RJ Bishop will get a big, big win right there for the 98 team. Jeffrey Fingai, he had a great run just a lap too late trying to go for that win. But give him credit, he has been the leader for Ford lately. Who come away second? Connor Meyer third, Seth Cole fourth, Courtney Keith fifth, Nathan Fisher sixth, Scott Roush seventh. Nathan Fisher finally having a really good chase run. He desperately needed, especially the fact that, well, Miles did not have a good run. A couple points, but, hey, it's better than nothing. Scott Roush, Amanda Harden, and Benny Watson. Going to get a top 10 at ninth. And TJ Hanley, a hometown hero, top 10 run. Not bad for the 0-7 there. So here are the rest of the results. You look at the drivers in that top 20, only one chaser there. There's Kyle Matthews and then Benjamin Miles out in 21st right there. That's where he is going to end up. Cole Deaver. Just whatever happened to that nine car just wasn't able to capitalize and trying to catch up to that 42. Remember, they were about two seconds back from where Miles was and where they were at. Because I don't know how, but they were. And then Flickinger lapped down at 27. He came down Pitt Road. Surprised that he did. Baskinger, 28th. Jones lapped down at 30th. Cody Lamas lapped down at 33rd, and Sicolia lapped down at 35th. And then aforementioned, the chasers out of it. Only Ron Bishop and Ace Rogers in 42nd. Well, that'll do it here from Texas for the Xfinity Series. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked it, be sure to give a like, comment your thoughts, subscribe, hit the inner salt, and hit subscribe button down below. A tie for the points lead. Looks like it's heading into our next chase race, which will be Pigs Creek. I'm getting word that that is correct. I believe we are going to go to Pigs Creek next. I am waiting for the official word from what my source are telling me. Yes, indeed, Pigs Creek. So until then, thank you guys for watching. Here comes the cup race. That'll be tomorrow. Until then, points to the end of the video like always. Till then, goodbye, everybody.